What's going on folks? Painless, see the title of the video. Um, I've talked about these things quite extensively. Um, you know, colorism. See, the thing about, let me explain something to you. Colorism is nothing new. Uh, many times us as black folks, even white folks, we love to look at this thing in, uh, of colorism in a vacuum. Um, meaning, you know, that you know, no one else could possibly be going through these things. Many of you all know I've lived uh, abroad. I've lived in Hawaii for years. I've lived in other parts of Asia. Uh, they do deal with their colorism. And one thing is common. The darker, the more problem. Um, you look at peoples across the Pacific, which I'm pretty much familiar with. Those people originally are very dark people. Uh, and the same template that the, that the Europeans have used, come in, desecrate culture, um, kill the men or effeminize the men, have sex with the women, make a new class of, of native, half native, half European to be the overseers in terms of governance to those remaining darker original natives. It's the same template, template from, again, parts of the Pacific, Africa, uh, even other parts of Europe, uh, all over the damn world, you know. Uh, but let, let me just say this, and black folks, you know, we have to understand this. <laughs> I, mean, I can't say this enough, and I haven't said it enough, obviously. Just because someone is dark doesn't make them an ally. And I've said that when people, we, we, li we live in what is supposed to be the, the uh, beacon of light, liberty, and freedom. Um, the strongest planet on, uh, the strongest country on the planet uh, where, you know, anything can happen as long as you put your mind to it. And the people that come over here are not aspiring to commingle with us. We're always looking for allies, which nerves me. We're always looking for allies. You know, and I think there's a correlation between all this, these different groups and this, this group think and what we see with this, these things when a, a, a black man finds himself in a position that he could have probably talked his way out of. Uh, now we want to yell justice. You know, and you don't hear a lot of black men having concerns about this situation. And the situation I bring up is this film called In the Heights. Um, it's on HBO Max. I have HBO Max. Uh, I don't, I see it looks like a, it looks like a dance play or something. Uh, the way they advertise it, rather, is just a lot of dancing and maybe a couple of scenes, and they all, it's like some jet, like some West Side Story stuff. You know, the sharks and the jets, the Irish, Italian, white guys versus the Puerto Ricans. Um, uh, if you don't know what that is, Google it. I think it came out in the 50s or something like that. But, it, I mean, it's pretty entertaining. Uh, but um, it, that's what it reminded me of. West Side Story. That's exactly what it reminded. It gave me those vibes of being in New York, Spanish. Um, apparently, a um, the, the director, which is an Asian guy, I believe, is a Chinese guy. Um, he was um, asked by a black Afro Latino, Latina, excuse me, uh, which I'm going to get into that. You see the thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> I. And basically she asked, you know, it was a good film, but she uh, noticed the lack of Afro-Latinas or slash Latinos 
um, in the movie and when we when we and when we they excuse me and when they were in the movie excuse me a little tongue tied they were um, more like backdrops um, secondary actors uh, just there to for whatever reason nevertheless they were there but um, I, I said to myself this is exactly what I've been saying. And there's a correlation to this. There's a correlation with this thought of, be, of inclusion. And with when you have a this in the black woman who sees the things that has gone on in terms of how this whole Asian hate thing and how Asians uh, treat black people that come into their stores. Nevertheless, black women still continue to go in these said shops, uh, risking being threatened, ridiculed, disrespected, physically assaulted, yet they still do it. There's a correlation between that and the thought process in which this woman, I forget, I forget her name, um, but th there's, there's, you know, there's something going on there. It's something going on there. And I've said this before with a lot of black folks. I've said this. If it's so goddamn bad in America, then get your ass up. I know if it was so bad for me, for me to be marching, for me to be doing this and that and the third, I would be making preparations to get the hell out of America. If it's that bad. The way I seen, I saw Negroes in the election, I had Negroes saying we finally made it, shit like that. And here you have the likes of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden pushing bills for a group of people who didn't even bat an eye to go bother and vote for them. Yet one, one instance And the cold part is one instance in which um, a couple of alleged street masseuse workers got shot up. <laughs> now here comes the hate bills. We got Asian guys shooting six-year-old kids. Now, see, Payless, you, you've always on the side of white supremacy. See, let me say, that story right there, as far as I know, was pulled um, pure um, bull feces. Damn, I can't talk to that. Was pure BS. That dude should be charged under the full extent of the law. I believe people raised so much damn cane that they threw his ass back in jail where he belongs. But yeah, you know, this whole idea, you know, look, let me just say this. The face of Spanish-speaking peoples, the face of Latino slash Latina is not Regina King with a Spanish accent or who speaks Spanish. It's not a chick that looks like Keisha Cole that can speak fluent Spanish. It's J-Lo. It's Selena, rest in peace. When I go and I want some Peking duck, I don't expect to see Juan back there making sauce. When I go to Silvio's and I want cheese ravioli, I'm not expecting a Chinaman back there making marinara sauce. So why in the hell, when I see a movie that is obviously um, for the likes of a certain demographic, that being of Hispanic peoples, why am I expecting to see someone, a Sammy Sosa? <laughs> I, I mean... <laughs> It's ridiculous.
I mean, we're dealing with a group of people, especially black women, who, who see the, the injustice in this or the injustices of a Eric Garner or Michael Brown or George Floyd or the injustices of this and not having enough black face Latinos but will willingly with full intent totally neglect, obfuscate the wrongdoings of those gentlemen I just named. I mean if you so if your brain, and I've said this is the society we live in. We're living in a society where people are, they are, they're, fake, they're fake dumb smart, meaning that they only see what they want to see. Um, and they only hear what they want to hear. It's just like poor people, poor-minded people, broke people who have the highest t champagne taste with a Colt 45 budget. These are the same people that when you propose something to them, oh, I wanna, well, shoot, let me see your watch. How big is your house? This fool lives in a matchbox, but he's checking my, he's checking my credentials and validity by wanting to see what the hell I'm driving and and what's on my arm and where the hell I lay my head at. That's the society we're living in, folks. Willful negligence. Willful this this whole wokeism. And this is a, this is the, exactly where this derives from. Wokeism. In which black women delve in heavily. I mean, I, I mean, for the life of me, you know, and I, I say, like I said, you know, the masses, the people of the dominant society is the term I've heard been thrown around. They have done enough. They feel they have done enough for the African-American. And there's an influx of Hispanics that are coming in here, different Hispanics. And the exchange of power within the minority groups is changing. You know, if anybody who's got a real beef in this country, it should be the Native American, the Indian. Yeah, they're the most quietest group. You know, I... <laughs> you know, when I hear... And, well, some people are going to say, well, painless, they're not African-Americans. Well, you know what? When... Um, no, when Jimbo from West Virginia sees... Uh, the likes of a uh, Big Poppy. What's his name? The dude, Red Sox or Sammy Sosa before he returned into, uh, <laughs> I don't, you know, Saltine Sosa. <laughs> they can't differentiate between myself, uh, a, a, a black man who goes back, gener whose, line whose lineage goes back generations in this country. Uh, they can't. That man can't differentiate between myself and Saltine Sosa. Okay. Um, so when I hear, when I say this, when I hear black people try to, you know, strong arm other people to include them, it, it's really no difference than what we claim white people do that so-called take our music, the John B's, the, uh, the Vanilla Ices. It's really a form of culture vultures. I mean, you, you wanting to steal. We, we, we love to try to steal people's cultures. 
And I even heard, I, you know, I, I've dabbled in back years back within the whole temp nuts and berry circles of always trying to dip people's cultures in chocolate. Meaning we're always trying to Africanize, black eye, you know, this Negro eyes, people's cultures. And I remember back in the days, there was people calling these dudes out on that. Like, look, I know they say we all come from Africa, but look, this is us now. And so they made some pretty good arguments. And like I said, when I, you know, when you look at, when you look at this, I, I don't expect to see African faces. Them people are European. When you, I would go so far as to say that many of those European Latinos, which are, Span look, they speak Spanish. Latin is a romanticized language. It's Latin. This is why you have the feminine, the, the, the la and the l and the o and the a, which to me the x is so idiotic, giving that Latino is already established as masculine. See, you know what that x means? It means I can wake up and I can be a fucking giraffe. I mean, it... it, it <laughs> That's rather extreme, but the, the point I'm making is the X means that this gender neutrality, gender neutrality, I'm neither male nor female, it's just we don't know what X is, you know, which is really stupid. And, you know, this whole LGBT thing, it has, it has its claws in the Latino community as well. I know we like to talk and beat up on ourselves as the LGBT community has its claws and fangs within the so-called black community, but it, it really has its claws in the Latin community or slash Hispanic community as well, as well. I was reading something uh, maybe a year ago uh, something I had ran across, I had ran across talk, see, when you're reading and delving in this LGBT and how they tried to equate black uh, struggles in the past and similarities, they were doing this shit when Obama was in office, trying to say, you know, civil rights, you know, with the marriage thing and you know, it's equivalent to the black civil rights struggle. See, you run into a lot of crazy articles and shit. See, LGBT ha is filled with a lot of racism. There's a lot of racism in the LGBT community. And what I ran into, apparently there are, like you have Match, Plenty of Fish, B um, Bumble and Tinder, you know, heterosexual dating sites. You have LGBT da the, uh, dating sites. And the article I read, because they were talking about gender and race, that a lot of the Asians and the black men, you know, they're like, I don't, you know, uh, anybody else except a black guy or anybody else except an Asian guy. You know, kind of, and this goes on in the heterosexual world too. But the the reason I'm bringing it up is because you would think in the LGBT with their fucking pride shit, and we love everyone, and we get along with everyone, and it's all about peace, love, dicks and assholes, that there wouldn't be any racism. No, I want everybody except the BBC. <laughs> I mean, and, I, and like I said, you know, <laughs> you run up, when you're delving and researching and investigating and trying to become abreast of that community, you run into some crazy shit like I just mentioned. Racism amongst, yeah, who would have thunk? But, <laughs> but, you know, look, 
I expect to see light skin or European Latinos in shit like this. I mean, hello, Spain. Spain is in Europe. Europeans that speak a different language. Latin is a European genre of, I guess you could say, of, uh, no, I, it's European. Its, its origins can be found in Europe, not in South America. In Europe, it's a romanticized language. I remember Italian is a romanticized language. Anything derived from the Roman Empire is de roman Rome, Roman romantic. These are in the like I said, the law, the the masculine and the feminine. They were very, very, uh, you know, very strict about that. It was very, you know, distinct, the feminine and the masculine. If you look at old literature, you can see that. The male and the female. So, um, which is why putting X is really retarded <coughs> to me. Uh, when you already have that language that differentiates male versus female. What the fuck is the X about? Oh, that third gender. What is it? We don't know. We don't fucking know. But anyway, yeah. Um, but, you know, this whole idea of, you know, just trying to include and, and be, look, those people... And with the, you know, this the Asian man, the, you know, he's kind of say, well, basically, you know, next time we make a movie, or make, next time I make a movie, my bad, I'll include some black, basically, uh, whatever, thanks, okay, fuck off, you know what I'm saying? That, that's what I got from it. And <laughs> I, uh, look, folks. Black folks, you know, you can't be included in everything. Uh, I noticed it as well, but I was like, who the fuck cares? This is obviously a, a, a story for Hispanics, Latinos. The main actor is Latino. And like I said, the whole culture, vulture, let them people have their shit. We always complain about people culture vulturing us, and I've always seen posts, damn, we can't have nothing. Well, damn, you ever thought that other people can't have shit? We don't need to implant ourselves in every goddamn thing. And then, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't want to be somewhere I wouldn't really want it. And I see that a lot of times with us as black folk. We, we'll just scoot her in and people looking at us all crazy, knowing damn well they don't want us to be there, but yeah, well, I'm here, except me. What, no, I mean, and then when you get into these places, you wonder why people are sabotaging, trying to get your ass fired and shit. Go somewhere. And I think a lot of people are starting to wake up to this. See, and it goes hand in hand with what I did in my uh, one or two of my last videos. I said a lot of shit has changed between the time of 09 and now. I think people are more aware. I think the so-called black community, the youth, a uh, 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 certain segment of the youth that aren't into all this demonic bullshit, gender confusion, they're understanding um, that shit, I don't want to be nowhere. I ain't want it. I would say that they're more just, they, they I mean, you know, you see them fighting for justice and all that. But there's a segment that said, well, shit, I don't want to be nowhere. I ain't want it. I'm finna go start my own damn business, which that, that is great. Great thinking. Instead of the old Negro way, you know, well, I'm supposed to be here just because. You know? And that's a good thing.
because hell, I don't want to be. I've said this, and many of y'all can attest. I said this a, a, a lot of times. I said, hell, I don't want to, you know, I spoke about affirmative action and shit. I've spoken how affirmative action really uh, hinders black folks. Okay, yeah, we'll send you to Harvard because we know your ass going to flunk out. When you should, you know, you should have been at George Mason University instead of above here in the Ivy Leagues. And these intelligentsia liberal leftists, they know this shit. This is why they'll say, well, we'll send any group that makes under $40,000 a year, you get a free tuition to Howard. Your ass don't even make it past the second semester, if the first. They know this shit. So they paid for your little, they paid for your first 12 semester credits. You know, you took, what, five, five classes? What are credits now? You get three, what, three credit hours a class or some shit? So if you're taking five classes, that's 15 semester hours. And what, what the fuck, I don't know. They didn't have to pay all that money. It was just a show, because they know many of these Minority people are going to flunk the hell out anyway. But you know, um, that's my video, Frame of Sound.